I'm Stu Harrison, I'm here at Miriam Pianos and we are just outside of Toronto, Ontario and we are back with another piano review. Today we are going to be looking at the W. Hoffman Professional Series P162 Baby Grand Piano. We are going to be covering a few very specific things. I'm going to be talking about the action, I'm going to be talking about the overall scale design and the tone production of this instrument uh, and then I'd like to tell you a little bit about why on earth of all the instruments in the showroom right now, why this one uh, has really managed to grab my attention and uh, inspire some very creative moments in front of this instrument. It's very unusual, and I don't say this uh, to sound um, piano snobby, I don't say this uh, to sound elitist in any way, but anyone who spends a lot of time around pianos will know what I'm talking about. It is very unusual for me to sit down in front of a piano that is less than ninety or a hundred thousand dollars and have it genuinely take your breath away uh, and cause you uh, to to, to really just play differently than you would normally uh, sitting down to try out an instrument. To me that's one of the most interesting effects that a great instrument has is that when I sit down to a piano uh, I always think of myself as being in the driver's seat and when I'm in front of a great instrument I know I'm in front of a great instrument because I immediately start responding to that instrument as though it's a partner in crime, as though it's somebody who's throwing me dance moves that I didn't really expect to be given um, and it inspires me to react in a way that would have been different if I had sat down in front of a piano that was just going to do what I told it to. And that's something that happens, that's a magical thing that happens when I'm in front of a grand piano uh, that's a really well built, well designed, inspired instrument and often, it's not because it's expensive, but oftentimes those instruments happen to be the ones that are in that price range. That's a very roundabout way of coming back to the fact that this instrument has that effect on me, legitimately. And it always has. This is, we're not just talking about this one particular piano that we've prepped to death or have, you know, had voiced by some magician. I have played this instrument in Europe. I've played this instrument at a couple of NAMM shows. We have been through a half dozen on the floor here. Uh, and consistently, this is a piano that punches way above its weight. It is a five foot four piano that is made by C. Beckstein Europe. Uh, the piano is made at their Czech factory and this Czech factory is a factory that's doing some pretty incredible things. Um, a lot, and a lot of times when we talk about these reviews I don't really often refer to the piano factories. This is one I'm going to pay, uh, you know, sort of draw attention to. Uh, everybody involved in uh, business in any way or anybody particularly involved in manufacturing will understand the power of having a group of talented, inspired people all pulling in the same direction. And Beckstein has managed to achieve that in spades with this particular factory. It's a, it's a factory that is at its maximum possible output. They are working day and night to try and fill back orders right now. And the workforce there, the equipment, the investment that they've made is churning out some really mind-bogglingly good instruments. And the Professional Series Hoffman, in my opinion, is right at the top of the heap when it comes to what that Czech factory is putting out for Beckstein. So the P162 5'4 piano uh, is a couple of, you know, this is all background on the instrument. Um, it is a cousin product or a sister product to the Beckstein Academy B160. Uh, if you were ever fortunate enough to, to be able to sit down in front of a B160 and a P162 side by side, 
you're going to quickly notice that the scale designs are virtually the same, uh, the cabinets are virtually the same. Um, there is much, much commonality between the two instruments. Uh, it's quite clear that what Beckstein has done is when they made the reinvestment and expansion into that Czech factory, uh, they have exported some of the designs and a lot of the expertise out of their Berlin factory down the road two hours to the Czech factory uh, and are producing a very, very similar product to the Academy. Um, but even still, there is something special about the tone that this instrument is producing. So we've gone over, uh, obviously, uh, you know, my impressions of the piano, the background of the piano, where the factory is coming from. So let's now talk about the music. What is it that's reaching my ears that's causing me to be so uh, legitimately excited to play the instrument? Treble, really, really great treble out of a piano is not the easiest thing to engineer or to produce on a consistent uh, basis. If you look at many of the design features that piano manufacturers have come up with over the last hundred years, a very large percentage of them are actually focused towards getting good treble tone out of a piano. Uh, you don't hear a lot about uh, companies having to do things for the mid-range of the piano or the mid-bass of the piano to try and get it more bassy or get them, you know, your, your mid-tenor section to be, you know, clearer. Um, you know, they will often focus on things like projection, they'll often focus, uh, often focus on things like uh, responsiveness uh, and sensitivity. But when it comes to treble, it's a whole other engineering beast. You're talking about very high tension, very short strings, uh, and to get those strings to really create the same type of projection that's coming out of a string that is 40 or 50 times longer is not the easiest thing to do. Things like duplex scaling, uh, that whole treble bell uh, that Steinway innovated about 100 years ago, uh, you know, in pianos like Blutner, um, uh, the Aliquot, uh, scale. All of these things are designed to do one thing, which is try and make the treble as uh, projective uh, and as sustaining as the rest of the instrument with these tiny little strings. So when you sit down at a, I would, I would describe this as a mid-range performance piano, and you start playing this piano and you hear the treble, that is absolutely the first thing that stands out to me is the top two octaves of this has nearly the same level of clarity projection and just bell tone as I feel like I would be getting out of a piano at least twice its budget. So if people are out there thinking, okay, I've got $40,000, $50,000 to spend, and uh, what's my best value? You're not necessarily focused on brand. You're not going to only uh, look in one store or another. You're really just hunting the planet for the best value. Um, it, to me, the treble out of this instrument uh, is one reason to at least make sure that you play this as a part of your evaluation. Um, when I'm sitting down and whether I'm uh, really digging in or whether I'm just playing quietly, I could explore that treble 15, 20 minutes just out of the sheer fun of listening to all of those partials mixing around uh, like a really well structured wine that you get in your mouth for the first time, you've never tried it, and your ear starts to break apart all of these tiny little bits of flavor. And again, this is something that you demand and expect out of a concert instrument. We're not in front of a piano that is pretending to be a concert instrument. And so, without harping on it too much further, the treble on this instrument is absolutely a reason to get excited. And at the very least, please check it out, put it on your list. Uh, the basics, of course, it does have a duplex scale. It's a very well-designed duplex scale. I like uh, the scale tensioning on this piano. And what they've done with the bridge and the treble is also quite interesting. It's a capped bridge, um, but there is a, a, a compression uh, cut in the bridge also, which really helps to focus in, in a small way, amplify the treble tone that's actually reaching uh, the soundboard. It also doesn't hurt that the soundboard is a really nice cut of Austrian white spruce, 
This is not a low-grade Sitka. It's not some sort of a laminated, you know, surface tension thing. So they're putting all the right ingredients in it. But for anybody who really knows piano design well, you'll know that the difference between uh, any part of an instrument speaking really well or not is often the tolerance of uh, less than a sheet of photocopy paper. So bravo to the factory, bravo to Beckstein for having created an instrument that's going to give me that much out of the top end. Let's talk about the action. Um, So what I love about the action on this piano is how easy and effortless it is to play. Uh, again, this is a something that is punching way above its weight in my opinion. The um, action design that goes into the Hoffman Professionals um, is exactly the same action design that goes into the Beckstein Academies. The difference is that the tolerances that the actions are finished off to, uh, at least before it reaches the finishing teams at those factories, uh, is slightly more coarse on the professional than it goes into the academy. Uh, however, as a lot of people know, once you get the raw ingredients into the hands of a really inspired, talented team, that team at that factory, from what I can tell, is making up the ground in terms of what they're getting as a raw ingredient, um, and they're making that up uh, in extra time and, and just extra professionalism in terms of regulating and fine-tuning that action so that it's quick, it's effortless, um, but it's insanely responsive. Uh, without really having to uh, think too hard about it, um, you're able to jump all over the dynamic range um, without um, sacrificing uh, any level of control, uh, which is always that balance between control and dynamic range. And in a lot of ways, the responsiveness uh, reminds me of a really well set up uh, Shigeru uh, or something a lot higher up the C. Beckstein line or a really, really well set up Hamburg Steinway. So treble, one, action is secondly, certainly the two. And the third thing I'm going to draw the attention to uh, is just the, the uh, cabinetry. What they have done to make sure that people immediately differentiate the professional series from anything else coming out of that Czech factory, and because it's so close to the Beckstein Academy as well, to make sure that there's no confusion there either, is they're doing all the professional series in this lovely silver chrome um, uh, uh, color scheme or, or uh, makeup. Uh, the plate is done in a, in a nice stunning silver. All of the hardware is plated nickel and even uh, the front uh, logos, the made by C. Beckstein insignia on the side, all of this uh, is re in, done in a beautiful plated nickel. And the feedback that we've received from customers has been overwhelmingly positive. Anytime you get something that departs too much from the standard shiny black and, and brass look, you're always worried, well, are customers uh, you know, going to go for that? It's, it's, it's a little bit of a departure from what people are expecting out of a grand piano. Uh, and no, the response has been uh, very, very positive. We've had people who've come in and said, you know what? Brass is really not a color that uh, we're decorating with anymore. Almost all of our appliances are uh, stainless steel. Uh, brass is just not a color that you see in a lot of people's palettes in 2018 right now. And, uh, you know, we are so... Uh, pumped about the fact that we can get a piano we love to play um, and it's going to also feel like a piece of furniture that we would have bought anyway uh, to go into the room. So between those three points uh, all coming into a piano that sits very very comfortably in the mid performance range uh, budget, size, price, all of that in the piano uh, again this is a piano that has no right to look and sound as good as it does for its price. So thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me again. Uh, I really appreciate the time. We've been talking about the W. Hoffman Professional Series P162 Baby Grand Piano. If you haven't already, find a showroom with this instrument well set up in it and go and enjoy. You are going to have some fun. fun as well.